but check this out. Isn't that the coolest thing? <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to Farming Simulator 22. I'm an old guy gaming, and in this episode, uh, we are going to sell our produce, and we're going to actually buy some more chickens. Uh, I have one carton of eggs here uh, that they've produced so far, uh, but I found out after the last episode that I can actually buy more chickens. I can only buy them in 60 increments at a time, but I thought it was only letting me buy 60 in total. So let's do that, because I'd like to get this thing filled up. <clears throat> now. I'm not going to fill it all the way up. I'm going to fill it halfway up because then what will happen is that uh, these chickens will reproduce on their own. And then I can either keep the chickens in here, you know, for egg production or I can sell. I can sell them, um, at, you know, after they grow up for, you know, for a little bit of money. So anyway, I think that a transport is applied to the transport. Okay, yeah. So why am I not able to buy any more of these? This is grayed out for some reason. I don't know. Um, what the heck, man? Why is that grayed out? I don't know. I don't understand why I can't do this. Okay. Um, there's probably a reason for it. I'm just not sure what that reason is. So I guess I'll have to look into that later. Uh, if we go to here, animal dealer. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know why that's grayed out. That is weird, man. I also found out that the roosters don't actually do anything. They're just there for looks. I guess the chickens will, in this game, not in real life, of course, but in this game, the chickens will reproduce whether or not there's a rooster there or not, which doesn't make any sense in real life, but hey, it's a game, right? Okay, well, yeah, I'm not sure why I can't add more chickens. Um, I I don't understand that. There's probably a reason for it. I'm sure, Well, I'm sure there is a reason for it, but I don't know why what that reason is. Um... Yeah, I don't know. That's just really weird, man. Select. Oh, 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 I have to select it first. Okay. I thought by clicking on it, I had selected, but apparently that is not the case. Okay, so if we buy another 60 of these, uh, which is going to set us back 3300 bucks, then that brings it up to, uh, the coop up to half full. And then I believe in two months' time, then they double. And then at that point, we could... Um, well, I guess we we need to wait a little bit longer until all the chickens are adults, and then we can sell half of the adult chickens for a profit, and then uh, wait till they reproduce again, and then sell those for a profit, and you know basically wash, rinse, repeat. The thing that I'm not sure about though, let's go ahead and buy these right now, uh, is that okay? So it doesn't look like it really changes the visual here but we but we now have um more chickens in there anyway um what was i gonna say so i don't know if that's gonna be more profitable than selling eggs or not we'll have to kind of just wait and uh and see you know how that comes together over time any hoozle uh as you can see i've loaded all of my pallets onto the trailer here and the reason for that is because uh, the bowling alley has the best prices on everything right now. So that way we can just take the whole kit and caboodle to one place. So for lettuce, they're giving $9.88. Now the grocery mart has is matching that price. But for tomatoes, bowling alley is giving $5.08. And for strawberries, they're giving $2.55. So they have the best prices on all three. So that's why I have everything on the trailer. So that way we can just take it all to the bowling alley. All right, so let's get going on that. Um, I have all of my hay fields rolled, uh, which means that they are now, whoops, um, all 100% fertilized, as you can see in the lower right-hand corner. So that's done. I did all of those contracts, those cultivating contracts, but I did, I did make what I'm going to call a short-term mistake. 
<laughs> by purchasing that big cultivator because it, it's too much for my tractor. I mean, I can use it with this tractor, but it uh, yeah, it's very slow going because it's it's just too big for this tractor. So what I what I ended up doing is I went ahead and just leased a larger tractor so I could finish the contracts. I still made you know somewhere around twenty three twenty two thousand dollars profit or something like that I didn't actually count it uh, because I had to pay eleven thousand dollars to get that tractor so I didn't I didn't lose money I just didn't make as much as I could have but what that means is until we can get a larger tractor that can handle that cultivator uh, we're, we're gonna have to go back to borrowing you know the the farmers equipment when they provide those uh, contracts for uh, cultivating because yeah I just it, it's way cheaper to do it that way than it is for me to, to lease a tractor you know from the store for that purpose okay so let's head on over here to the bowling alley with our nice big old load of produce look at all that produce man beautiful I know it's loaded a little bit crookedly but part of that is because Again, the trailer shifts, you know, sometimes when I'm trying to put stuff on there and then it messes it all up, so. But, you know, it's on there good enough to, to get the job done, so we're not too worried about that. So I'm expecting to make around nine to $10,000 off of all of this stuff, hopefully. And then, you know, that'll bring up our, our bottom line a little more. Let's see, what else do I have to tell you? I have installed a couple of new mods. I installed a mod that has um, some more options for pickup trucks. Um, I did get a comment uh, from my dad, actually, that I shouldn't be driving my tractor around uh, on, on the road so much because it's hard on the tires. That is certainly true in real life. Uh, in the game, I don't think tire wear is actually a thing. But, be, you know, in spite of that, I do, I do want to actually get a pickup truck for just, you know, general driving around. I know that in real life, it's not a good idea to drive your tractor around all over the place. So, you know, we'll work on that. Uh, the other thing is, is I found out about a really cool direct drill cedar, uh, a John Deere cedar on the on the mod hub. It's relatively inexpensive. I think it's only six or seven thousand um, dollars. So I installed that too, and we will at some point in the near future I'll probably purchase that so I think that's about all I have to update you guys on uh, it is obviously of course November 3rd and uh, yeah uh, our, I think our our bales are around 60 to 70 percent fermented so we have to wait till they fully ferment of course before we can put them in the the storage that we bought for them but that we won't be able to do that till either tomorrow or the next day all right, let's sell this stuff and see how many dineros we make. So again, I'm expecting around nine to ten thousand dollars. There we go, nine thousand and eighty bucks. All right, not so bad, eh? Not so bad. Okay, um, so let's see. I think I think we're pretty much done for. November 3rd. I don't think there's anything really more for us to do. Let's just see if any new contracts happen to have popped up. None of them have. Okay. So, yeah, nothing there. Um, we've sold all our produce. We don't have really enough eggs yet to do anything with that. So, we just have to wait a little bit longer for, you know, the chickens and all that to kick in. And uh, back at the farm, we're waiting for, you know, the next round of hay, which we probably won't see another harvest of hay until March so I don't know if it's gonna, it's probably not gonna grow in in December it might I don't know we'll see we'll see I, I don't remember what happened last year without it I just don't remember and um, so yeah we're waiting on the chickens we're waiting on our existing grass harvest to turn to silage and that's really about all, all we have. Uh, so we'll see what contracts come available in December. And did we also... Actually, I think we needed wanted to sell our oats in December, right? 
All right, well, let's get, I'll tell you what, let's get back to the farm, and we'll take a look at that again, uh, because maybe that's what we will actually do tomorrow. Okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me, let's take a look at the chart here. Uh, no, not that chart, this chart. So we were looking at oats. And yeah, so we actually will be able to sell our oats tomorrow, which is great because the price will be at the highest it will be. So that is the plan for tomorrow. And after we sell the oats, we'll see where we're sitting and decide what uh, the next maneuver is. But uh, I'm going to take the rest of today and go over to Mama Joe's, get, uh, get, get some breakfast, and then, uh, you know, just relax and... You know, watch a little bit of TV, maybe some YouTube videos for the rest of today because there's nothing else for me to do. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, then tomorrow morning on December 1st, we will sell our oats. So I'll see you then. Man, it is chilly. It is December 1st. We probably better go back to sleeping in our farmhouse for the next <laughs> few months because it got really cold last night up here in the loft. Uh, okay, so ladies and gentlemen, it's December 1st, and that means we can now finally sell our oats. So let's go, go connect our tractor up to our trailer, and we'll take a look at the, uh, pricey, the prices. I wonder what the temperature is. Let's take a look at that. It's 38 degrees. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a bit chilly. Uh, looks like we maybe can expect some snow on December 3rd, which is our day for doing our, um, excuse me, our produce, but hopefully it won't be too bad. I mean, the temperature here in wherever the heck Elm Creek actually is, it's actually not, not that cold, um, for a winter time. We must be a little further south. I, I thought I heard at one point that this was supposed to be in Ohio, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Ohio gets pretty doggone cold in the wintertime. Uh, maybe maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Any hoozle. Uh, let's go ahead and hook up to our oats. These have been sitting in here for a few months. Just waiting for us to get the best price on them. Oh, I want to also wanna check on... Let's check our silage bales, too. I just want to see how far along those guys are. I don't... Think they're silage yet? They're probably really close, though. Ninety-seven percent. So later on today, they will, <clears throat> excuse me, they will convert to silage, and then we can actually put them in the storage. Okay. Okay, so let's back up here to our oats. We are pretending that we had a tarp over these the whole time um, because for whatever reason, this trailer doesn't actually have a cover. I have no idea why, and it's not something that uh, is in the configuration for this particular model of trailer either. So we're just, we're just gonna pretend we had a cover the whole time. That's all we can do. All right, look at that oatmeal, man. Well, it's not oatmeal yet. I love it. Okay, let's take a look at the prices. Uh, so we want to go here and we want to go oats. We are now in December, which is the best price to sell or best month to sell rather. And who's given the best prices? So it looks like Gold Crest Valley is giving six ninety four, which is significantly higher than everybody else. Um, like a hundred bucks higher than just about everybody else, except for feed grain and uh, feed and grain south. Now, to use Gold Crest Valley, we are going to have to do the train, which is kind of cool. I, I I used the train in my multiplayer server to sell my my timber. Uh, we haven't actually done that here, so yeah, that'll be kind of fun to do. Um, what we want to do though is let's go to the map for a second. And I believe, okay, that's our train rental. 
Uh, and that's the train rental. I think, though, we have to offload the grain here. It, and no, wait, that's the lime station. Okay, hold on. I don't think I have all the icons on. Yeah, we want tip stations. Yeah, we want tip stations. Okay, so there is a tip station here, Grain Pool East, which I believe is the one for the train. Is there one here as well? Grain West Silo. Gold Crest Valley Rent Train, Grain West Silo. Yeah. Why don't we go here only because then we can actually ride the train kind of across and just enjoy that. Um, and I think we'll be okay dropping it off over here, I think. You know what? Let's go over there and take a look at that first before we commit, just to make sure that that is indeed going to be okay for us to use. That's kind of... Kind of dark out this morning, but, you know, it's probably because of the overcla overcast clouds, I'm guessing. So I don't know how much money we're actually going to make off of the oats. I mean, I guess I could do the math based upon the prices. We are going to have to pay to rent the train, but it's not going to be super expensive, though. I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal, but it... It will, uh, you know, cost us a little bit, but for a hundred bucks more per liter over just about everybody else, I, I would have to say it's probably going to be worth it. Okay, so yeah, let's head on over there. You know, this is a part of Elm Creek that I don't, that I, uh, I don't know if all of you guys have seen. I mean, I've been through here before, you know, like working contracts and stuff. Uh, but it's kind of neat over here. There's like a whole bunch of um, production buildings. There's some a dairy over here and some houses and some other stuff. So it's like a... It, it's definitely the west part of the town, I guess we'll say. And I am planning on having an episode where we're going to just drive around and, and kind of explore and see the map and, you know, get some of the collectibles. Maybe we'll do that. Yeah, see, there's the dairy there. That's kind of neat looking. Uh, at some point, you know, we are going to raise cattle later on, and when we do, then that's, I'm sure, where we're going to sell the milk to. Uh, there's a Bronson Tire Center there, which is cool. Um, I think that's the cereal factory. Oh, we should probably get back on the right side of the road. <laughs> uh, right there. And then kind of back over this way, there is, you know, off to the right there, there's a, another biogas plant and another grain place right there, too. Grain West, I think, is what that is. So, yeah, it's pretty deep. And, uh, again, there are some areas on this map that we haven't... I haven't deliberately, anyway, showed you guys. And even a couple of places that maybe I myself haven't really seen... It will we'll do in one you know episode where we kind of just take a little tour <clears throat> of the place. But for now, um, I think we are headed this direction. Let me check my map again. Uh, either that or no, not that. Bring this up. And the train's actually running right now, and we are. Oh, we we've gone too far south. <laughs> Okay, let's, uh, yeah, I've been busy yakking at you guys, and we went too far south. Okay, let's go back this way. That might be where we actually need to go, where all those silos are up there. Like I said, I haven't used the train station here on the on the let's play series on single player but I have used it several times now on the multiplayer okay, so let's head over this way
So it looks like that's a pickup location and it looks like this is a drop off uh, here inside. So let's pull on in here. I'm not getting a, an unload icon in here. I wonder why. Yes, I do see that little collectible there, but we we're not we won't mess with that right now. Um, if we go over here, yeah, it looks like this is a this is where you can load the train. You can load or offload here. So why isn't it prompting us to offload here? Or maybe we just don't get the prompt here. Maybe we just do it. I'll tell you what. Just in case I screw something up, I'm gonna save the <laughs> save the game here. Um, and then let's go ahead and. see tip side I don't want to do a left tip I want to do a well I mean I guess we could there's supposed to be a way I can change the oh that was weird Uh, you know, change which side of the trailer tips from. Oh, there we go. Oh, now it's telling us. Okay. We're not quite getting it all in there. I mean, it, I, we actually are, but it just doesn't look like it. Okay, there goes all our oats, man. Into the silo. Now, this is the place we were talking about, either here or the one out east, where we could, if we opted to do so we could just store all of our our green um in one of the silos there okay so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna park the tractor here and hop out and i believe this is where we call the train Yep, yeah, okay, so train is going to arrive soon. So it'll come from that direction. I What I did is I just came up to this and pressed the R key. So if you look in the upper left-hand corner, if I pressed R again, it says return rented train. Uh, but it should be showing up here uh, pretty quick. And then we can, we what we'll do is we'll pull up to the loading area. We'll load the green car with our oats and then we'll travel across the map to the other end uh to and then and, and then at that point the train uh travels to goldcrest valley which is i'm assuming another another town to sell the green but it'll spit us out because we can't actually leave the map ourselves well speaking of which one of uh, my my buds told me on discord that um, somebody has made a, a new Elm Creek map, which is larger, you know, than the original map. So it's it's Elm Creek, but it but it's it's a lot bigger, which is really cool. Okay, so let's hop up onto the train here. Uh, where is? How do we get in this thing? Back here, maybe. Uh. Okay. Uh, it says enter vehicle. Okay. <laughs> um, I guess we're inside. Oh, look at that. We're inside of a train. Isn't that the coolest thing? Okay. Um, let's go back to third person view just so we can see a little bit better. Please start the engine first. Okay. Now, I think... Hold on, let's hop back out for a second. Oh, I can't go any further than that. Okay, so that's that's got to 
most likely is a liquid tank. So it's one of those cars back there that will have the, that we put the grain in. I just have to figure it out because I haven't, I haven't done grain before. I've only done logs so far with the train. But check this out. Isn't that the coolest thing? <laughs> All right, man. All right. Okay, so let's stop the train. Hop out for a second. So let's see, which one of these cars would we put the oats in? That would seem to indicate maybe produce. This is the log car. This would be a flatbed that I guess you would maybe put a bunch of pallets on perhaps. So my guess is that we put the grain in this trailer right here. It doesn't give us any particular indication that that's the case. Oh, okay. So maybe this is like a, a refrigerated car or something. Car equipped with vented hatch covers. Yeah, I'm, this has got to be the only one I think we can use then for that. Okay. This has got to be liquids if we're hauling, you know, liquids. So let's hop into the train. And we want to get that second car right underneath the loading area. Maybe it'll just do it automatically. I don't know. Let's see. Okay, do we have to, yeah, R for start filling. Select the silo whose content you want to load into your vehicle. Wheat, barley, oats. That's the one. Okay, start. Oh, there it goes. Look at that. <laughs> oh, man. This is neat. I love it. Oh, and that's it. <laughs> I, guess we, <laughs> I guess we didn't have a whole lot of oats, did we? There they are. <laughs> okay, cool. Very cool. Yeah, that was a pretty small field. Nifty. All right. So that should be everything, right? Yep. Yeah, it says we have 14,543 liters of oats in the car. It only fills it 12%. So let's head on over to Goldcrest Valley, ladies and gentlemen, and sell our oats. It's not every day you get to uh, drive a big old locomotive like this. Actually, this this isn't a locomotive. It's a it's an engine. Probably a big diesel engine. This is cool though, man. Check this out. I love it. We get to just ride the train and enjoy the countryside with the fall trees, even though it's now. December. I don't know if you guys know where Elm Creek is. Elm Creek just plain fictitious, or is it actually supposed to be? I know it's supposed to be like in the U.S., but is it supposed to be based upon a real place, or is it just fictitious? Because most places in the mid Midwest by December first are going to be way the heck colder than this. Anyway, this is uh this is the other station that we could have. Uh, oh, uh, no, we don't. We could have also offloaded here, but then we wouldn't have had the fun train ride. Cause see what it does there. Your train will now uh, drive to Goldcrest Valley and will return to the other side of the map. Do you want the train to sell the load goods? Y yes. Uh, why wouldn't I want it to sell there? Maybe it. Maybe it can store it there too. Okay, so it cost us $105 to lease the train and we got $10,000 for the oats. Wow, okay. <laughs> $10,000, huh? Dang, man, I was hoping we'd get at least 20. Our greenhouses are so much more profitable, man. Holy cow. Think about, it probably cost me $10,000 just to prep and plant the field and lease the equipment. I mean, we, yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> That's terrible. 
That's absolutely terrible. All right, well, it is what it is. Uh, we won't be doing oats any anytime soon unless unless we have a very large field because um, excuse me. Yeah, that was not worth it. Uh, oh, I guess this car wants to pull in here <laughs> in its way. No, what? Leave your car in good company. Park and ride. Okay. All right. Well, apparently um, some dude is going to come along and give us a ride back to uh, our tractor on the other side of the map. I can't believe we only made ten thousand dollars off of that. That's terrible. That is absolutely terrible. It's. I mean, I don't know how realistic that is. Okay. Um, the dude, the parking ride's giving us a ride back to our tractor, and we're there. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if uh, if that's true to life, but my goodness, we if we made a profit on that at all, it was very very minuscule because you know we prepped the field. Uh, what did we do? We we cultivated the field, we stoned it, we limed it, we fertilized it, we planted it, we harvested it, and oh yeah, jeez uh, Louise. Okay, well, it is what it is. If you know, if we if we do grain in the future, we we need a big big field for that to be profitable because that just was not. Our greenhouses are way better than that. Makes me wonder if the greenhouses are maybe a little OP. I don't know. I mean, now what I want to do is just buy a field and put down you know 50 green <laughs> greenhouses in it. We'd make so much more money doing that. Oh my goodness. Okay, well you know it's not a hundred percent about making money that you know we're enjoying this game and just enjoying farming in general so you know we got to keep that in mind and that is that is to a point true for me i mean you know we do need to make money we want to make money it's fun to make money we need to make money in order to expand and get the stuff we need and bigger farms and stuff but you know like i said earlier i i'd like to try every crop at least once just to do it you know even if we don't actually make a, a ton of money off of it but wow and you know the other thing too about the oats is oats generally they they definitely sell for more money than wheat and barley does i don't know about sorghum um or canola let's look at that as we park right in the middle of the road here because i'm curious and curious old guys want to know uh but if we go back to here where are we going go back to here so you know, if you compare the, you know, what wheat sells for, what barley sells for, even what canola sells for, well, canola is actually a little higher than oats, isn't it? Not a little bit. Yeah. Okay. What about sorghum? Oh, yeah. So of the, you know, of these f five main grain crops, what about soybeans? No, soybeans are a little higher than oats, too. Okay. Well, anyway. Oats are sell more, you know, more than wheat, sorghum, and barley. Put it that way. And we still didn't hardly make squat off of that. I mean, I don't know exactly how much it costs us to prepare that field, but I, you know, I can pretty much tell you that we did not make very much money off of that deal. <laughs> so it was fun to, to do it, though. I mean, you know, it was fun to do it. Anyway, okay, I, I'm just, I guess I'm just a little bit surprised. I, I figured we'd make a little more money than that, but it is what it is. So if we want to make a profit, uh, uh, if we want to make substantial profit off a of grain, we need larger fields, and ideally we need our own equipment. You know, we do have our own harvester and header. Um, we have our own fertilization equipment. So we're getting there. Uh, we have our own cultivator, even though our tractor can't really run it very well. <laughs> So, you know, we're getting there, but yeah, I'm just, like I said, I'm just a little bit surprised. Okay, anyway, uh, guys, I think that's pretty much all we can do uh, for December. For, oh, you know what? We haven't looked at contracts, actually. Let's look at contracts, see what's going on here. Seriously? Oh, you know why? Because it's winter. That's right. I remember running into this last time. There were no contracts, pretty much none at all over the winter. We didn't start seeing them come in until March again. So, that being the case, what I think I'm going to do is well no i'm gonna bring you back in january because we're about to, we'll be able to sell our silage so i think the plan is i'm just gonna chill um figuratively figuratively and literally <laughs> until december 3rd 
I'm going to load up the produce, and then when I get the produce loaded, I'll probably bring you guys back at that point. And then we'll sleep until January 1st, and then we'll go sell our silage and, you know, see how much money we make off of that, and then go from there. But I think we're going to go ahead and wrap up this episode here. So it was a fun episode. We got to ride the train, you know, even though selling our oats was a little bit of a, of a disappointment, but that's okay. Uh, we got to ride the train. That was fun. And, uh, we, you know, we made uh, the requisite $9,000-ish off of our produce, which is about what was to be expected. All right, guys, that's it for this episode. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment and share the video. And we will catch you in the next episode. Goodbye.